So glad to see each and every one out to God's house on this Wednesday evening. I was trying to think today, it used to be called prayer meeting many, many years ago. It used to be uh, called uh, Wednesday evening service. It used to be praise and song service. Whatever you want to put on the title of it, it's still Wednesday evening. Still time to go to church. And I'm glad that, I'm glad that time has come around so we can be, be all together this evening, fellowshipping with our brothers and sisters in Christ looking out and, and seeing the mask bandits, as I call you. Now, that's not, that's not a good day. Good, good thing, is it? But anyhow, mask people, oh, that, that's much better, Rich. I'm glad you put all that over your face. That way we don't have to look at you. But anyhow, we're glad you're here. and Here to have a good time in, in God's house to fellowship, just, just to show that we love each and every one here tonight, and, and I know you love me too. Those out on the Internet, we're glad, we're glad you're here with us this evening also. We hope and pray that you've had a good day and you're ready for some good singing and some good preaching. After all, our brother will be here to, to bring our, men, our message to us. We're here to sing his praises. And we're going to ask Brother Rich to ask God's blessing on this evening's service. Brother Rich. Amen. Thank you, brother. Sister Connie has chosen page 370 at the bottom of the page. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and has now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. out across the congregation there's many smiling faces that we don't see this evening there's a lot of sickness all around us this evening i notice our dear pastor's wife is not with us i ask you to remember her this evening as we pray i look back and brother roy's not with us this evening uh, sister jan's not with us this evening there's a lot of us that's not with us this evening but you know god is here and that's for Amen. and we want to lift him Amen. up in, in song and in praise this evening so because he is so good to me and i know he's good to you we went to the funeral home today to pay our last respects to a dear lady that we've known for many many years matter of fact sister suzanne used to be the pastor's wife here brother don patrick and suzanne was our pastor here at long run many many years ago she passed away the other evening we went up to see her and i know the family's taking it hard this evening saying goodbye to the mother, so let's lift up the Patrick family also this evening as we pray. You may have a prayer request that we can lift up to Jesus this evening. Charlie, I'd like for you to pray for a man named Joe Ferguson. He is in Upper Sandusky. Uh, I talked with a couple of his sister-in-laws earlier today, and they said he had some cancer that the doctors had found. And, uh, they wanted us to remember him tonight in prayer. Amen. Remember that request this evening, Brother Joe? Sand, up, up in Sandusky this evening. And continue to remember Tammy as she's waiting to, for her surgery. And, Amen. And uh, also our daughter-in-law, she had her hip surgery and just remember her. Amen. Remember those two requests for Sister Connie this evening. Someone else. Someone else. Of course. Remember. Amen. Remember Helen's brother this evening as we pray. Someone else. Someone else. If remember not, our pastor. Yes, remember our pastor. And I know he's 
bearing a heavy load, and we certainly thank him for bearing up under this this uh, thing, helping us through through our t troubles and trials in this life. Somebody else, somebody else. If no other, brother Jim, ask God's blessing on these requests. Father, we come to you again tonight, Lord. We thank you so much, Father, for this hour that you've given us. Another day, Lord, this side of eternity, God, that we can come together and enjoy each other's presence tonight, to fellowship one another, to give you praise and glory, Lord, because you're the only king of heaven and earth, the only one true God of heaven and earth tonight. Lord, there's no one else like you. We just praise you tonight, Father, for this hour now. God, be with us. Be with those, Lord, out there in, in uh, the airways, Father, on the airways. God, touch their hearts tonight. Be with those that are sick and afflicted, those that's not feeling well. Lord, you know who they are. You know them better than what we could uh, imagine what they're going through. So, Lord, we, we just praise you. And we know, God, that you're able, Lord, to touch them, both physically and spiritually tonight. And Lord, for those, Lord, that need touch from a sin sick soul we know god that you're able to do that through the blood of jesus christ your son god we know lord that he has paid it all for us his blood is is uh, so valuable lord it, it it brings us into a, a long lasting relationship with you if we just believe and have faith in, in our lord and savior jesus christ and what he's done upon the cross Tonight, fathers, we've come now. Bless each one that's here tonight. Bless each song, each testimony, Lord. May you receive the honor and the glory and the praise from everything Amen. that we say and yes. do, Lord. It's not about us. It's all about Amen. you. Amen. We thank you, Lord. Bless the word tonight. It's already been said from Brother George. We thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we're turning to page 265 for the next selection this evening. I had the privilege of talking to the Hildebrands last evening. And they, uh, they send their love to us and wish they could be back in, in God's house. And we wish they would be back shortly too. But due, due to some physical ailments, they, they've been advised to stay away. So we understand that. But remember the Hildebrands as we sing page 265, Love Lifted Be. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Stayed with him, singing to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. Nothing else could help love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I'll cling. In his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, merit my soul with song. Faithful loving service to, to him belongs. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Souls in danger look above, Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the anger. Master of the sea, pillows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love. Aren't you thankful for the love of Jesus this evening? You may have a song out there you want us to try to sing this evening, since that's the only two Sister Connie chose. Somebody out there with a favorite this evening.
to anybody. Anybody. Page number six. Page six this evening. I want to know more about my Lord. While traveling through this world of sorrow, I'm on my way. Father, somebody else maybe with a special song this evening, a special request. Anybody at all? Tommy, you got another one? Page 179. Fill my way with love this evening. Every day with 
I walk with the hippopotamus. Let me go all the while with the song and the smile. Pay my way every day with love. Sing the race will be yours, and I'll travel the world with a bite in my home above. Let me sing, bless the king on the way to the shore. Fill my way. We can never get too much of God's love, do you? Amen. Let it show to the lost uh, that you come in contact with each and every day. Donna, you and Jim got a special to sing. Jim does. Jim, come on and sing for us this evening. Uh, oh, Brother Jim's are coming. Someone stand and testify this evening. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that anymore. I don't know. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's got a testi testimony, haven't you? I'm not supposed to ask you. You're supposed to get up and give it. <laughs> that request this evening for the women to come off the ladder today. Anything else while Brother Jim's are coming? There'll be much in prayer for our brother as he comes to minister. Right, Bless you, Mike. Yeah. certainly find that song. I think probably Sister Collie probably got it already knows where it's at. But be much in prayer for Brother Jim as he comes this evening. You know, if you want to take these off, all you have to do is come up and sing. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. I was sitting over there for a while ago, but my glasses got so fogged up I couldn't see anything. So I started going this way. <laughs> I tell you what, God is good. Amen. 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 That's why we're here. It's not to be seen or heard, but I just want to share this song with you. I, I really love this song. It's got a great, great meaning. It's a great consolation to know how what Jesus did for us at the cross of Calvary. And when we come to him as as to be his own we can have the confidence knowing that jesus christ and our name is written in the book of life Amen. now if i can see through these glasses I... to be well known of me i may not ever be and i
was born again And no one can blot it out It's sealed forevermore It's in that book of life Kept by the Lord For every deed I do from God tonight. Amen. Since I dropped that on the floor, do I have to wear it again? Nope. Oh, pick it up. <laughs> Thank you, brother. What a great song. Great job. Amen. Someone else this evening. Anyone else with a testimony or a song? We've got some special ladies that's going to sing that song for you, Brother Mike. I, I thought they knew it, but I wasn't going to. Uh, what are we going to do? Sing the garden. You can sing it again. While they're getting ready, someone stand and testify. This down here, Connie, this one? What? The top one. The top one here. Well, I'm certainly glad to be in God's house this evening with God's people. You know, as, as Brother Mike said, it was, it's been a beautiful day. Got a lot of things accomplished down through this day. And, you know, God knows exactly what we need to do and when we need to do it. He's got that master plan, Brother George. And, uh, you know, we sometimes try to, try to do things on our own and get, get ourselves in trouble. But as long as we depend on God, we can certainly get through this life. Be much in prayer for these ladies as they sing. This beautiful song, and it is a beautiful song that, uh, that uh, has been sung in, in churches for many, many years in the garden.
Thank you, ladies. Such a beautiful song, beautifully done. Anyone else this evening? Anyone else? If not, here's our pastor, Brother George, with this evening's message. Brother George. Good to be here tonight. I don't know if my wife is watching this, but she will see it sometime tomorrow if she's not. But it's always different coming to church without her, but um, there are some folks that attend church now without their spouse, and uh, they don't have the luxury of leaving church and going home to them, and I do. So um, I just pray that she gets to feel them better. And, um, no, she doesn't have the coronavirus. Sometimes people think just because someone doesn't feel well all of a sudden, but uh, but I, I do thank you for praying for her. And I do uh, want to take a moment and we'll say a special prayer for Brother Rusty Remington. He is the pastor of the Pleasant Valley Community Church. And um, I think it's important for us to pray for him because if he's injured, uh, bad that's bad enough but also he has duties as a pastor as well and so that would put hardship for his congregation so uh, let's take a moment and pray for him all right lord we do thank you for brother rusty lord i thank you for the work that he does for you and god i pray tonight lord you see the needs and god you see the situation that uh has arisen today god i know he just celebrated the birthday lord and i pray that you would encourage him and strengthen him lord no matter what has happened to, uh, today god that you will be with him lord bless his family his wife lord and bless his church god and uh, i pray that you will give him help and strength today we love you lord and we thank you in jesus name amen amen god is good to us isn't he all right, the book of Luke in chapter 14, if you'd like to read with me tonight, the book of Luke chapter 14. It has been a day. <laughs> I like what one of those people said one time, uh, if you've had a bad day, uh, just thank God at the end of it that it's over and uh, you get another one tomorrow. Um, I think it's dangerous to complain about bad days too often, you know, because they could get worse. There's a lot of things that we need to be careful of how we uh, uh, conduct ourselves or the things that we say because there's always an opportunity for something to be worse than uh, what it is. So we just need to be thankful for what we have. Um, if you know me, um, my whole adult life, I won't say I've struggled with weight. I've never really struggled with it. It's just been there. It's either there or it's not, you know. And so uh, last night um, I was sitting um, on the couch and Teresa wasn't feeling well. And, you know, so like I'd lost some weight and then, you know, <clears throat> blame everything on the virus, you know. It wasn't like I quit working. I was working every day. It wasn't like I quit pastoring. I was here every service. But you know, you, it's easy to blame it on that. And I said to her last night, I was eating, have you ever ate one of those rice cakes? <laughs> yeah, well, I ate two of them last night as I was sitting there, and she wasn't feeling well, and I wasn't laying the guilt trip on her. And I walked in, and she didn't have anything, uh, you know, to make, and she said, you can stop and buy you something. So here I am, I'm sitting there, and I'm eating that for like a dessert, like a rice cake. And I made a little joke about eating this thing. I said, have you ever? She said, did you can have some uh, cereal without milk? I said, oh, this is, you know, as close to that as I'm getting probably. And I got to thinking, you know how many people would love to have that? I'm so blessed tonight. I'm sitting over here and I probably um, shouldn't be wearing this shirt because the button is just a little. How blessed am I? And do I choose to complain uh, because I have a rice cake? Sometimes we're just so... I would just say like this, Teresa always jokes with me and, and tells me how spoiled I am, and I tell her how spoiled she is. But I think we are as a society sometimes, if we're not careful, we complain about things that we have no need of complaining about. Having said that, let's preach tonight, right? The book of Luke in chapter 14. 
Let's pick up in verse 15. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, and this is Jesus speaking, a certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at the supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuses. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. And then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done, as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. <laughs> when you read this scripture, I don't know what it, are some of the things that pop into your mind and some of the things that come to you, but um, it says this man made a great supper. And he asked a lot of people to come. The invitation was there. Have you all, all ever got an invitation for something? For weddings, for graduations, for uh, we just received a um, invitation for a, a 40th anniversary for a dear pastor and his wife, and we were unable to make it. But we receive invitations as you do, and sometimes we can make that, and we choose to, and sometimes we can't. Have you ever made an excuse why you could not when really you could have, but you looked for an excuse? Probably so. I know that there have been times that I have. And somebody said, well, we'd like for you to do this. And I said, but I can't. I have to go for a root canal. <laughs> or, um, you know, there are other things. <laughs> and so sometimes I'm thinking, oh, Lord, I hate to tell them I can't. And so sometimes you just run out of excuses. But I find this, um, in the day and time we live in, I find how curious it is, if that's the right word, that people would beg God for help. The people are praying even today. Pray for uh, Beirut. Pray for, and I'm not saying that it's wrong to pray for people, but don't you think somewhere we ought to be the people that give back to a holy, righteous God when he does for us so much, and then we, re we refuse him, continue to push him away, and the first little thing happens, somebody says, pray for so-and-so. And sometimes I would like to say, and it's been me too before. I've been there. I haven't always been a Christian. It's been me too. But I would wonder if someone came to them and said, you know, why would you even ask me to pray for them? They want absolutely nothing to do with God any other day of the year except for when there is trouble. So God bids them to come. And, you know, I'm not sure they even say thanks, no thanks. They start saying why they cannot come. And there are three of them, three of them that are asked, uh, just three responses, no doubt more that were asked. Uh, but uh, the servant came back and he said, well, the, they, they all with one consent begin to make excuses. Like they get together and said, look, if we're not going to go to this. And so they begin to make the excuses. And um, the first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. Now, I don't know that he had never seen the piece of ground. And I don't know that if you would buy a piece of ground without seeing it. I'm sure there are people that do certain things. You know, I hear nowadays, I saw on television, I guess it's true. And my mom will say sometimes, Facebook lies. She said, it just lies. It'll say something that's not really true. And you do have to examine what is being said. But they were talking about buying cars. And now you just go and buy online. You don't even have to be there. You don't. Have to, we'll make it comfortable for you. We'll drive there, have the papers ready, you sign the chores. And I'm supposing that that's true. And I'm supposing you could do that. But um, I used to think to myself, who in the world would buy a car if they never drove it? They never test drove it. Now, I'm a guitar man. 
And uh, I hear all the time from people who play guitar and own guitars and buy guitars, I always hear people say, I would never buy a guitar online that I couldn't play, Jim, because even if it came off the, the, out of the Martin factory and you're a Martin man, some of them have different sounds than others. They may be the same year. They may be the one right after the last one that just got put together, and there it is, but they may have a different sound. And so I wouldn't say that this fellow really never saw the land uh, but if he bought it, couldn't he have went any other time? He owns it now. Couldn't he have went to this great supper? He chose not to go. It wasn't that he couldn't. He chose not to go. And so what is the next thing? It says, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. Could he not have proven them before he bought them? And they're his now. And so if they're his, if he uh, has bought them, and, and the scripture says that that was his own words, I have bought five yoke of oxen. If they're his, can he say to his servant, put them in the barn and I'll check them out tomorrow. I'm going to this big shindig tonight. But he didn't. So he made his choice. So there are two people that made their choice. And another said, I have married a wife. Oh, my lands. <laughs> Would that get you in trouble tonight? And especially when your wife's not here. That wasn't, his excuse was he was using her for an excuse. I have bought a wife. Or I have bought a wife. I have purchased a wife. I have bought, he says, I have married a wife. And all of a sudden, now, it's put the possibility on her. I have married a wife, and therefore, I cannot come. And why is that? Some of you men, I'll try to stay out of this, but did you ever say, I don't need my wife to tell me what to do. I don't need my wife's permission. <laughs> There's not many people here tonight, but I just saw a sideways look from one wife to a husband. <laughs> it, and it jokingly is, uh, I'm the head of the family. And she's the neck, right? And the neck turns the head. And that's the big joke. But how many times, if this man would have been honest and would have, he may have been honest, said I can't go because if he's going to marry someone, he may have already knew who he was marrying before he married her and he may have understood that she's made plans. And, but anyhow, he chose not to go. So three excuses from these three people, doesn't say about the other people, but these three people, three excuses. And they all had an opportunity to be at this great supper, but they didn't go. They didn't come. Now, what happens when you have a good church service and you miss it? And the next time you walk in the door, someone says, oh, you missed it, Brother George. You should have been here. <laughs> because you're the pastor yes you should have been here but if they ever say oh you really missed it you should have been here it was a great service man they were shouting man they were it was great I wonder what happens here after finally he says you don't even don't even let them come they had their chance don't let them come I wonder about the next day after this it doesn't tell us what happened but I wonder did anybody say wow Oh, you got something on your shirt there. Oh, that's probably some food I spilled last night. There was a great supper, and I went to it, and it was fantastic. But they all made their excuse why they couldn't. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. And the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes in the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. Now, these people weren't the people that were chosen to come in first, but he said to bring them in. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. What, what does that tell you? If we were looking at this and saying that if we could put this and place this as like the marriage supper, if we could look at it that way and say hell enlarges itself every day, uh, but the dimensions of heaven are set, there is room for people. And Brother Mike said tonight that his son was saying that it is important for us, it is our job to let them know whosoever will, they can be saved. It is our job. 
I said before this started, uh, when, when we first started with the coronavirus stuff and none of y'all were here and we were coming and did a few things from the house and then we're coming and Rich and Cherry are back there and they're running at and I'm up here singing a song and, and preaching. And I'm thinking to myself, my mindset was, George, don't get discouraged because people aren't here because they can't be. And then my mindset started going to, this may last a long time. And if it does, there are going to be some people you won't see again, George. They just won't come. And I kept thinking, okay, I know that to be a fact. I'm a pastor. I'm not picking on people, but I just know that that people are people and some of that may happen. But then I got in this mindset that if there are three people that come and God says, pastor a church, I'm going to pastor a church. If there are five people that come, if there is two people that come, if there is one man back there run the video machine and one guy up here trying to preach. And what I'm saying is we should all be that man or woman that says, I am going to go no matter what happens. I'm not talking about just going to church, folks. But these people had an opportunity to go to one of the greatest uh, get-togethers they would ever go to. And they all passed it up. And finally... The Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them. So he's saying, Go out and bring them in. Do everything you can do to bring them in. (laughs) To them that come in that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Okay, so in this process, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking of all these fellows that had these excuses. Why were they asked in the first place? I don't know. I don't know why that it was these people that were picked in the first place and that those that were sick and halt and blind and, and maimed were picked second and then finally are the hedges and the highways, I guess just bringing in, just like going out in the cornfield and trying to glean. They were getting everybody they could get. But these people that had the opportunity first, could we look at it as the Israelites? Mm-hmm. Why? He came into his own, his own received him not. They said, nah, I'm too busy. And so then the master gets angry, and he says, then go what? I'll tell you what I'll do now. I'll turn to the Gentiles. Yes, Yes, we could look at that. And exactly what happens, and then what? To whosoever will is what he says. Whosoever will. And so in this whosoever will, we look and see that anybody that was willing to come could be a partaker of this. I want to try to tie something in here tonight. You remember Peter said, uh, Lord, I will go with you even unto death. I'm not like any of these other fellows. I'll go with you. I'm thinking tonight on my way home from work, I'm thinking how great it must have been, and they didn't even know how great it must have been for the Lord to handpick these men that walked with him. And one of the fellows at work this morning did a devotion, and he was speaking as he did the devotion, uh, talking about uh, Judas, or maybe it, was, maybe it was yesterday. And as he was talking about Judas, he was talking about uh, the other disciples may not have understood fully who Judas was, but Jesus knew who he was. The other disciples may have looked at Judas, and they saw Judas do the, some of the same things they did. And even at the Last Supper, when he said, one of you will betray me, they all started saying, is it me? If they knew it was Judas... They would have just said, it ain't me, it's him. But they didn't, evidently. And even Judas said, is it I? And it was. But guess what? It was all of them to a certain extent. Now, they didn't betray him as Judas did to sell him, but they all forsook him and fled. But if you look at Peter before the Spirit, it was easy for him to deny. He made the statement that he never would, but it was easy for him to The invitation that is given out here in the book of Luke that is given out here, I look at this and I think to myself, 
The Spirit of the Lord will be what draws a man or a woman to him. Do you know how many people that I have asked in 30 years of attending church, how many people I've asked to come to church? How many people have you asked to come to church? And what is the purpose of people coming to church for in the first place? So we can get a bigger number on the board, so we can get more tithing. It's not any of those things. So what is it? The bigger number on the board means there are more souls in the seats. And the more souls in the seats mean that there are more people can hear the word of God. There are more people that could be saved in a building, but they don't have to be in here to be saved. But they could be. But this is a place to rejoice and to worship God. This is a little bit of heaven on earth. Because when we leave these doors, we go right back out into the world. I love people out there. But not everybody out there, and sometimes not everybody in here, has the same mindset or heart set that we should have for the Lord. I love people out in the world. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not looking and saying all those people are bad. I'm saying all those people are are God's creation, and they all, just like me, need to be saved. So what do I do? I can't go out there and shun them and say I want nothing to do with them. What do I do? Then I go out like this servant and say, you need to come. The master has prepared this great supper. You need to come. You know how many people are going to say, that's not my thing. And it, it doesn't say that they, that, the, that they didn't like this servant. It doesn't say they didn't like him. I think they're trying to let him down easy. It doesn't say that they even knew who the man was that made the supper. Doesn't say that they did, doesn't say that they didn't, but it just says they were invited. How many people get their feelings hurt because their family won't come to church? You got two times. I mean, we're all Christians here tonight, right? And all of you watching, maybe? You got two times to get your family in the church house. When are those times? We know Christmas and Easter. And those are two holidays that the world, that the church world uh, says we've just commercialized those. And oh, I hate that time of year because it's nothing but, and I'm thinking I love that time of year. I love Christmas. I love that time of year. And I love Easter. I love that time of year. And what better could you get as a pastor than you get people coming that you never see. You don't know their names. You don't know their first name. You don't know their last name. But the family begs them to come and they come. Do you know why they come they don't come because me they come because you <laughs> so it probably tells me that some of these people if they would have been family they would have went to this supper when the Israelites when those that would stand around and would say to Jesus we have Abraham for our father and he said God's not your father he said if God was your father you would have known who I was I don't think these people were interested in coming to the supper because they didn't know who was putting the supper on. You know what? I was never interested in going to church. I was never interested in going to church. When I was lost, when I wasn't a Christian, I understood there was church. I understood that my parents went. I understood that they weren't always Christians, and then they were, and it was good for them, and it worked for them, but it wasn't my thing. I didn't love God. I didn't love the church. I liked the church people all right. Some of them got on my nerves. And guess what? Big surprise. Some of them get on my nerves today. <laughs> but guess what? I didn't know the Lord. And so I didn't say, oh, yeah, I want to come. Somewhere it has to be the Spirit of God that deals, that draws and in this world we're living in, you're not their judge, I'm not their judge, you're not my judge, I'm not your judge, but I'm saying if the Lord sent today, if God said, go get your church, there are some people in churches around that may not go. Why? Because they have a head knowledge, but they don't have a heart relationship. And these people right here, they weren't even concerned with this supper being and they weren't even worried about going to this thing it didn't mean anything to them and it re, it reminds me of people today it reminds me of church people today people who have been in church for years now if you're watching this and and i know that there are people watching this who come here but haven't been here i am not talking about you unless i am I say what are you talking about I'm not talking about you unless God would say, hey, this is you. But I'm not saying you need to be in this building. And 
At one time as a pastor, my mindset would have been, we got to do everything we can do to get them in, get them in, get them in. And now I'm looking, thinking, we have never experienced anything like this. And so, God, I'm going to handle it the best way I can. I'm just going to sit back and say, whoever comes, can I go out and compel them and beg them? I mean, I put on Facebook, do you want to come and join us tonight in person or live stream? I'm tickled to death if there are people that are watching us online. If they don't feel comfortable coming or whatever, but what's really going to get to me is when no one even cares to watch anything online. I could understand that people don't come as much. I could understand that. But I said it in my mind, don't get your feelings hurt. I don't know about you, but I'm telling you as a pastor, that's a pretty good place for me to be. Don't get your feelings hurt if you don't get a bunch of people. I got pastor friends that I love, and sometimes I'll uh, scroll up on something or see how many people have watched their uh, message or something, and I think, you know, these are people that maybe have never been reached because they didn't want to get out. I hope you don't crucify me for this, but I sat right over there, and I bring out my phone, and about the time she picks up the service and starts, then I share that to my Facebook page. And every once in a while, I'll look down. And you know what I see on that screen when I look down? Because I'm down there, I'm not up here. I see Charlie standing right here, or I see a shot of the church like you would see if you watched the video. But I also see when someone pops on the screen. That doesn't mean they watch the whole thing. And sometimes there are 17, 18, 15, 20, 12, 9, whatever, but I see who pops on there and I see people that I have asked to come to this very church before and they've never showed up, but they showed up on there. So what do I do? Do I get down and discouraged and say, oh, woe is me, it's terrible, our church don't have but about 13 people tonight. Well, you got 13, 13 watching online. You got 26. Man, you keep going a little bit higher, right? Tomorrow, when I put it on YouTube tonight, tomorrow there'll be people that can't watch it on Facebook, be watching it in uh, Virginia, be watching it in North Carolina, be watching it in South Carolina, be watching it in California. Fine. However, they get it. But there's no need for us to be discouraged. We're just the servant going out and saying, come, come. Let the servant go back home and say, that's it. I quit. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm just quitting. What if he would have got discouraged and just sat down? But he didn't. You know why? He knew he's going to get to eat in a little bit too. He's going out to bid them all to come, but he also knows he's got a place at the table. When it's his time, he's going to do it. So I would say tonight, be encouraged. Keep going. Peter, before the Spirit of the Lord, Peter had this, he had to talk. Um, he had the big talk. I mean, he could talk the part. But then he walked away from Christ. But after he received the Spirit of the Lord, after Christ is crucified and he sends the Spirit back, Peter then with the Spirit, now he walks the walk. It's more than just talking the talk. Now it's walking the walk. So what does walking the walk look like for me and you tonight as Christians? It means if this world does not fall apart. If the wheels don't fall off the wagon in the next 5, 10, 15, or 20 years, it will eventually, and one day it will be us anyhow, and we will be gone. And in the process of this time, I would say to you, don't become discouraged. Don't become complacent. Don't become, oh, I'm just tired of it. Where's everybody at? Nobody's coming. It is what it is. Can we change it? Keep bidding. I'm not saying bring them into this building. I'm saying come to the Lord. And when you come to the Lord, whether they watch it, I mean, you could say, <laughs> somebody just said to me the other day, said, you know, if I was close to your church, I think I'd come and listen to you preach. And I said, well, why don't you just go online and listen to me? Then you'll know someday if you ever want to come and hear me in person. Somebody said to me, and more than once they've said this, hear me preach a funeral and say, that was a really good message. I, I, I'd like to come to your church and hear you preach. And I always throw this out. I preach different at church in the pulpit than I'm going to preach at a funeral service. It just is different. Somebody said, I like your little morning devotion, and that's all right. I'm glad that they do. But even I preach different than even the little morning devotion. And sometimes the preaching of the Word of God offends people, and people don't like it, but guess what else it does? It is 
through the foolishness of preaching, God chooses to deal with men and women and to bring them to him. So if we stop because of discouragement, then what? Then what about your family? What about your friends? What about those people that would come on the holidays or special services? Now, I don't know if I told you this, but once a pastor to church, and for the month of February, we had the love month. You know, we already know that uh, February for uh, Valentine's Day, I said, well, we'll have love month. And so one day we had friend day on a Sunday. And the next day we had a because we love you day. And we had a meal each, each one of these each Sunday. We say, you're trying to kill the church, Pastor. No, I was trying to build the church is what I was trying to do. And I just thought, you know, somebody's going to have an excuse why they can't come one day, why they can't come the next day. How many people in your family are going to come up with an excuse why they can't come four or five Sundays a month when it's a special thing? And so I said, we'll have the Because We Love You Day. And then the next, we'll have the Because He Loves You Day. And I said, we'll find things to get people in the doors. And somebody always kicks against that. And I've already said it here, but somebody will say, well, sure. Sure, you got to feed them to get them there. And I'm thinking, they got to eat anyhow. And so do you. Guess what? When they eat a hot dog, I eat one too. I got to eat anyhow. It's all right. Bring them in. However, but we won't ever be able to force them. And until the Spirit of the Lord gets them, he won't. He won't be able to make a difference in them like he did Peter until he gets them in his grip. They may be occasional churchgoers. But occasional churchgoers, it's going to be easy for a lot of them to say, nah, I can't come. I'm not going to make it today. Nah, just forget that. I'm not going. Let me leave you with this. This is something that I've carried for years. I scribble on things sometimes. I printed this up or typed it out. Maybe you've seen it or heard it. And i got to be honest with you, I don't know if this man's still alive. I don't know if this man's still walking with the Lord. I have no clue. But what I do know is I like what he said. And I think the only way to, ha- to have this and to hang on to it in our life is to have the Spirit of the Lord in us. Defending the faith, he says, I'm part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have the Holy Spirit's power. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of his. I won't look back, let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes my present makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sight walking, smooth knees, colorless dreams, tame divisions, worldly talking, cheap giving, and dwarfed goals. There's a lot to be said right there. And so if if I went back over it, it could break it all down. But what he's saying is I'm not playing church any longer. Then he says, I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotions, plaudits, or popularity. I was thinking tonight as I was sitting over there, how many singing groups would be pleased to come into a church with 13 people tonight. They say, well, we sing for a love offering, brother. We sing for a living. We want to come to your church. And I understand that. And yes, we have to, yes, we have to say, this is what I want to, but how many times does Satan just get in their mind and say, ah, there ain't nobody there. Oh, you're wasting your time. Why would you even waste your time to do that? How many, how many people have you ever heard of that started out their singing career? Big time country music, rock and roll, whatever, started out where most of them start? In the church. Their mama, their daddy taught them. There was some talent. Mama recognized it. Daddy recognized it. Grandma recognized it. The PTA recognized it. Satan recognized it. They started in church. Why? Because everybody could sing in church, right? It's like, go on and sing. Now you can't carry a tune in a bucket. Stay right over there. No, we let everybody sing, right? So they got their start in church. But do you know not everybody's on the Grand Old Opry? Why? Because they don't just allow everybody. I'm saying come to the Lord. He will take you. Some people will push you away and push you out. And it's for our young people. Sometimes it's way too late before they learn that, that they put all their emphasis. And I did. And maybe you did on chasing after something that we cannot obtain sometimes anyhow. 
Let me finish with the last two paragraphs of this. My face is set and my gate is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions are few. My guide reliable. My mission clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, deterred, lured away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of the enemy, pander at the pool of popularity, or meander in the maze of mediocrity. And the last thing he says, I won't give up, shut up, let up, until I've stayed up, stored up, prayed up, paid up, preached up for the cause of Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus. I must go till he comes, give till I drop, preach till all know, and work till he stops me. And when he comes for his own, he will have no problems recognizing me. My banner will be clear. He will know who I am. I was working construction, pastoring Lombardsville Church over on 73, working at the stadium in Columbus. Come home. I was tired. I, we lived in Otway. I pulled in. The kids were young. They were small. The phone rang. That's when we had a landline phone. Um, picked up the phone. Teresa's making dinner. I said, Hello? I said, Brother George, this is so-and-so. My wife's in the hospital. Can you come and have prayer with her? And I said, yes, I'll be there. Uh, give me time to get ready, and I'll be right there. And they said, okay. And Teresa looked at me, and she said, are you leaving? I said, babe, if someone agreed to pastor the church. I think that someone is me. <laughs> it's my call. I'm leaving. I'm going. Okay, I'll keep your dinner ready for when you get home. I said, okay. Now, she knows that. I mean, because she's, she's the best pastor's wife I know. She's in it with me, I, and, and she, she would tell you that too. But it's just like she knew I just got in and all this stuff. I'm driving out 73. The church that I pastor is coming up on the right. I'm driving towards the hospital, and i got to be honest with you. I'm tired. I'm flustered, <laughs> frustrated. Uh, sometimes in church there are little things that get you and I'm just I'm thinking on things and I, I'm thinking I am in no shape to go in and pray for somebody if I don't get myself straightened up before I get in there and so I start talking to myself on the way and as I start seeing our church come up on the right I mean my heart just seized and I said God you know I'm tired but God, I'm only going to be here for so long. I don't know how many years I got, but God, you use me for whatever you want to use me for and wear me out. If I complain, wear me out. Put me in. And what did I say when I moved to Myrtle Beach? And here I was doing nothing but just being a hospice chaplain, which is a big enough job in itself, but I wasn't pastoring, wasn't singing in a group, wasn't singing in revivals, wasn't preaching in revivals. Now it was just me and Teresa. She said, this is going to be good for us. I said, you're going to get so sick of me, you won't want to see me all the time. But here I was, and I drive. And I'm talking three years before I pastored this little church, I would leave our home and drive onto the lot of this little country church-looking building, and I would sit there and pray, and I'd say, God, put me in. I'm like a ball player sitting on the bench. God, put me in, coach. I'm ready. I got so, I just felt as if I'm not doing enough for God. I would rather feel like that than say, I ain't got time to go to that tonight. I ain't got time whenever I'm asked to go do something for God. I ain't got time for that. Could you get discouraged? No, you could. <laughs> Would it be a good thing? No, it wouldn't be. And you know what? The world's going to turn until it stops. As they say, time marches on except for the person it stops for. It does stop. It stopped since we've been in here. For somebody, they've stopped. They're not breathing anymore. They're not living here anymore. It'll stop for us one day. Work while it's day. Be that little servant who goes out. There are people going to reject you. People are going to say no. People are going to say, I'm not going to do it. People make all kinds of excuses. That's not your business. That's between them and God. Do what you do. Amen. One night, a revival tomorrow night, and hopefully it feels this good because I'm ready to go for one night, a revival tomorrow night. But stand with me if you will tonight. I don't know if you got anything out of it, but I did. I, I felt good, so I think 
God has a great way of encouraging encouraging his church and hopefully tonight you can find encouragement through that lord as we come to you tonight god we love you we thank you for all you do for us god there's not a person in this building or a person that will ever watch this will ever deserve any of the goodness that you've given to us there's nothing in our lives that we could look at and say i deserve that or i was it, it, i am worth that god i cannot anywhere look and see where i deserve any goodness from you but God, I will tell you before this congregation and, and, and anybody else that would ever see this, Lord, I am so thankful for everything you've given me. And God, I'm so thankful for everything you've done for me and everything you've allowed me to attempt to do for you, God. I pray that you will help us not as a church to become down or become discouraged or become distant or become complacent. But God, I pray that you will help us to be like this gentleman uh, there in Seattle, this pastor who uh, penned this and said that he's not going to let up shut up and stop and all those things until you come to get him somebody just mentioned to me today the only thing i'm waiting for now is the sound of the trumpet and god i pray that you will help us to continue working until until the sound of the trumpet until the lord calls us home god help us to be faithful in your work we love you lord and we thank you for all you do for us in jesus name amen amen anything else Okay, we got to class uh, Friday night. It's Friday night. <laughs> okay, well, we'll decide why we're deciding. Uh, we'll see you. Hmm.